אוקיי, אז אנחנו יש לנו שיעור לראש חודש, ראש חודש תמוז, ואני אמנם את השיעור, choosing what to see. This is what we, um, we are using our eyes to see, but uh, how we are interpreting, uh, interpreting what we see is a choice. So we have to distinguish between the two. It's not just about what's over there, but how we perceive what we are seeing. So we are at the beginning of uh, Chodesh Tammuz, and Chodesh Tammuz is considered to be the hottest month of the year, we don't feel it right now, but uh, it's, in Israel it's the hottest month of the year. It's also, when Tammuz comes, usually it comes with the feeling of something bad is about to happen, uh, because we know something bad is about to happen. Yudzayin Bet Tammuz is uh, five horrible things happened, one of them was that the uh, The wall of the outside of Jerusalem was destroyed and it was the beginning of the destruction of, uh, of Bet HaMikdash. And uh, so when we hear Tammuz, we usually like tighten up and uh, get ready for something not good that's about to, to happen. Because right after that, we have Tisha B'Av, which is also a very difficult date for in the history of Am Yisrael. Both of the Bate Mikdash were destroyed on Tisha B'Av. Chet HaMeraglim was on Tisha B'Av. Chet HaEgel was on Tisha B'Av. And more things that happened. And we also know, especially again, I'm talking about Eretz Yisrael, that those three weeks between 17 of Tammuz and Tisha B'Av are very dangerous to go to the sea. There's usually the most cases of drowning in the sea happens between those three weeks. So there's also things to have with water that um, we need to look at. They call it Ben HaMetzarim. Ben HaMetzarim, yeah. Between, how do you say There is, uh, between the narrows, you know, like the Bosphorus. The Bosphorus is what? between Portugal and I think Spain. Oh, there the is a canal, canal? No, no, it's not a canal. canal. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, it's a time that is, it has a lot of bad energy coming with it. So we need to watch over ourselves and our children more carefully in this time of uh, the year. People that are more uh, sensitive can feel it, can actually feel the energy. The sleeps be, become rest, more restless. Uh, there's nervousness that you might not be able to explain, but it's there. Um, and, it's, and it's not always has to do with you specifically, but the time of the energy that is, is in the air. So Chodesh Tammuz in, in our sources is the fourth month, um, because we are counting from Nisan. And... Um, the name Tammuz is a name that came from Israel from Babel, from Galut Babel. It came with them, the name, like other months. And what's interesting about it, that the name of the month is connected to a ritual that women used to do with Avodah Zarah. You know what Avodah Zarah is? Okay. And, and, and it says, yeah, worshipping idols. So it says in the in Sefer Yechezkel, "V'ine sham anashim yoshvot," and here over there the women are sitting, mevakot et tamuz, crying the tamuz. And when we are reading the Mefoshim, what exactly is going on over there? They are telling us that they had um, a statue that was hollow in the in in inside. And instead of eyes, they used to put lead in it, and they used to lit um, coals, and when the coals were hot, they used to put the statue on them, and the heat would melt the lead, and the statue would look as if it's crying. And when the statue was crying, they were crying with it, because poor thing is crying. And they used to give him... Um, present and stuff so it's not going to be so miserable 
because poor baby is crying and we need to help him not to cry which is like ridiculous like can't you see that this is a statue you put the lead in it you put the the hot um, coal under it you are doing everything and you thinking this is something real to cry on what's wrong with you can't you see that it's that it's like fake so basically they chose to see what they wanted to see for some reason I don't know exactly why but this is what they wanted to see and nobody really cried over there there was nobody to feel sorry for or about it's just a statue but what they chose to see affected the way they felt they chose to see something that affected their heart and because they saw what they saw they felt sad and they cried with it and they also felt sorry for it and bought it presents so sometimes we the way we uh, choose to see things makes reality so distorted that it's becoming so far from the truth we don't even pay attention or notice how far away from the truth is it and it seems real to us the distorted truth the the not truth seems real to us which is uh, crazy and still it's very strange when we think about it why we chose and why there's a name for a Hebrew month by that name that is called after that of Odazara so we understand that there's a lesson here for us there's something we need to learn something we need to understand something we need to look at thank you please sit mommy so our Rambam Rabbi Moshe Ben Maimon wrote כל הכופר בעבודה זרה מודה בכל התורה meaning when you annihilate עבודה זרה you are basically admitting the Torah is true and vice versa when you are not um, renouncing עבודה זרה meaning you are not admitting the Torah is true so we think there's something there's something here about the עבודה זרה and the Torah and the truth that we need to look at so if somebody that is not like those women that cries for this Tammuz because they are so immersed in this Avodah Zarah and couldn't really recognize what Kadosh is, what Holy is, what Ruth is and they made the statue a God they made the Pesel Chaz v'chalila Elohim so this is one part that keep in mind we're gonna come back to it so also when we look at the Kabbalah and we see that uh, the month of the Muz has to do with the um, foundation of water we know we have a few foundation of the world we have earth we have air we have water um, we have fire so the month of the Muz has to do with the foundation of water again now we may maybe we can understand why the sea is so dangerous in those months um, and when we're talking about water we're talking about the sea and we're talking about the sea we're talking about concealed something that is concealed because when you look at the at the sea you see nothing you see just a plane of water but underneath un, unseen to us there's a whole world of life beneath the face of the water but we do not we do not see it it's it's concealed to us the same way Hashem is concealed from us in the world above the land above the land we can see the world but we do not see Hashem so there's in in the land everything is as if revealed but the most important thing we cannot see it is hidden from us the same way it's hidden in the water so um, in the in the inside the sea when we are going under the face of the water and we understand that there's a whole world over there we know it's concealed out, out under the water but once we see what's under the water 
it's actually telling us about how we can discover Hashem in our world. So the sea and the water, in, in a way, hints for us or give us a clue about how something can be hidden but is there. So the sea, by not revealing what's inside it, gives us information about how something can be not seen but exist, even in our world. The idea is, uh, is clear? Am I clear? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, there's a book that called uh, Bnei Sashar. Arab um, Tzvi Elimelech Shapira Midinov. He wrote uh, this book, and he's based his, uh, his writing about Kabbalah of the Arizal, Arizal HaKadosh. And uh, um, Rabbi Yitzchak Shlomo Ben Luria, if you heard about him, he used to live in Sfat. He, he died very young, but he wrote many books, and he, he was a very, very big man. And he writes over there that each and every month have uh, organs or parts that has to do with the head. And uh, Tammuz and Av, the month that comes after Tammuz, has to do with the eyes. Again, the Tammuz, the eyes, the lead, the crying, has to do with the eyes. The month of Tammuz and Av. Tammuz is the right eye and Av is the left eye. So there's two eyes. So we understand that this month we have a very special ability, if we only choose to, to see things that are hidden or not revealed to us usually, but now we might be able to see them if we open our eyes and choose to see. Okay? So we can see the inside, like inside the water, we can see the inside of every situation and understand each and every situation to its core because of this ability of this month to allow us to see things that usually we cannot see, even though it's, it's um, not an easy month, not, not easy month and not easy days are coming. So we can take things that are not positive and make them positive, or vice versa, if we are not choosing to see right. We can take positive situation and make them negative, right? So it's, it's up to us how we choose to see and how we choose to interpret and how we choose to perceive. And if we understand that and we allow the light of Hashem to enter our lives, then we can actually turn over, like actually turn over completely, 180, a situation or a state to a different state. For example, if we take the word Gola, which is exile in Hebrew, and you take the letter Aleph of Hashem and insert it into the Gola, you get Geula, Geula which, il, which is what we are waiting for, the salvation, the Geula, the Mashiach. So it's just about being able to put the light of Hashem into something and by that turn it completely 180 to the other side. But again, it's a choice. We can choose not to put Hashem in it and we can stay in the Gola. We can stay in exile and stay in that state and not move from here. However, if we choose to take this light and this Aleph and put it inside, we're getting to a whole different place. We're getting to Geula, which is the other side. So yesterday uh, night, it was uh, Erev Rosh Chodesh Tammuz, and tonight is Erev Aleph B'Tammuz, because Tammuz always have two days for the Rosh Chodesh. And this is actually yesterday, Kaftet B'Sivan, uh, Lamed B'Sivan, Kaftet B'Sivan, was the day that the Miraglim, um, the spies, went on their mission to tour uh, the land of Israel and um, tell Moshe what they found. And they are finished their um, um, job and journey after 40 days, which is exactly Tisha B'Av. When they came and they said that the land is not good and there are 
huge people over there and the land is eating its habitant and uh, we couldn't we cannot conquer it and we will be not able to to go up to it and it's impossible and when the people of Israel heard that they were crying they cried all night and Hashem told them why are you crying you have no reason to cry I told you that Israel is the land of honey and, and milk I am told you that I am bringing you to the best place on earth and you are listening to those ten people and you choose you choose to listen to them and not to Yerushua Binun and not to Kalev Ben Yefune that said no that's not true Haaretz Tova Me'od Me'od the land is very very good don't listen to them but everybody chose to listen to them and they cried so Hashem said okay you are crying for nothing so I'm going to give you a reason to cry for generations to come for all generations to come you're going to have a reason to cry you are about to enter Eretz Israel, but instead of that you're going to stay 40 years in the desert you're not going to come to Eretz Israel, and all of you that cried you're going to die here in the desert and only your children may enter Eretz Israel. So since then, from this sin of those ten people that chose to see bad where there was a, an ability to see good, they gave us Tisha B'Av forever. Like, think about that. What, what a few people can do for an entire people just because they chose to believe them. They chose to trust what they saw what they saw, not what the other two saw, not what Hashem said that, that there, there's over there in Eretz Israel. So, we are learning that this suffering, it's, it's starting in, in a root. And this, the root of all suffering is due to seeing. What are you seeing? What do you see and how do you interpret what you see? And what do you perceive that you see? And what you say to yourself or what you say to others about what you see? Are you seeing the truth? Is your see or vision is tainted? Do you really see the truth? Are you allowing the light of Hashem to be in your eyes so whatever you see is going to be filled with the love of Hashem and the truth? What are you choosing to see? And this is our lesson from this month and from everything that is happening for in this month. The, there's a Rav by name Avraham El Ahmed and he say the sin of the Meraglim was that they didn't understand and they didn't appreciate the value of Eretz Israel, And that's why they didn't like it. They couldn't appreciate. And because they didn't love it, when they saw that there might be difficulties in conquering it, they heart felt, they, they, they feared, they felt afraid. And they started to find all kind of excuses and, and reasons why it's not a good thing to go into Eretz Israel. And they said it to themselves so much until they believed themselves. They convinced themselves. Does this remind you something about what, where we started with this statue yes. of, of believing what you think mm -hmm. you uh, want Same. to believe? Yeah, and, and, and they said, They, um, I don't know, I said, they, they, they felt like disgust from, from a very good land. They didn't believe what Hashem said because they convinced themselves so much about what we saw is true what Hashem said is not true they already believed that their truth is the truth their distorted truth is the truth which is not right and we need to remember Yeshua Binun and Kaleb Ben Yafuna said Tova Aretz Me'od Me'od the land is very very good and they also said, We can go up. We can inherit it. We, we have the ability 
to take the land. Why, why, why are you looking at that? Why are you looking at it so, so distorted? How come we are not seeing what you saw? And, and why the entire people chose to believe them? And not Hashem and Moshe and Yeshua bin Nun and Caleb bin Yifune. I don't know, but this is the history that we have. This is our history. So we see that the way we see ourselves, the way we think about ourselves, is basically affecting how other people see the world as well. So this generation of the desert, they are a generation of slaves. 210 years they were slaves in Egypt. And uh, Hashem actually took them out of Egypt and He told them, Banim Atem Le Hashem, you are my children. You are the children of Hashem. And they gave them a, a, a standing of, of Kedusha, of holiness. He said, you're going to be a nation of, 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 of Kohanim and, and a holy nation. This is what you're going to be. And he told them, You are Am Segula. You are special to me from all the other nations. So many compliments, so many uh, encouragement, so much trust in them, so much... Um, power he tried to give them and still inside themselves they feel slaves they feel unworthy they feel not valued they feel they have no value at all and they are very afraid they say they say over there we saw the giants that are the sons of the giants which are the most giants of the giants. So many giants and so scary. Everybody is so big over there. We need to be very careful about all these giant people. They can step on us and squash us and we need to be very careful. And then they say a very interesting sentence. They say, Okay, what are they saying? They're saying, we saw ourselves as grasshoppers. Tiny, insignificant, that can be squashed in a minute. And so the same, this is how they saw us too. Because we saw ourselves as nothing, they also saw us as nothing. So it's, we are so insignificant. We have no value, we have no, no nothing. We are grasshoppers. We think about ourselves as nothing. Doesn't matter that Hashem said, Banim Atem Hashem, you are my children. Mamlechet Kohanim Vegoi Kadosh, you are a nation of Kohanim and, and a holy nation. Am segula item limikola amim. You are you are the, the most special and unique people from all the people on on earth. And still, what they see, we are grasshoppers. We are nothing. We are worthless. This is how they chose to see themselves. Because what they saw with the eyes is what their heart felt, not the other way around. The eye see. And the, left feel, and the heart feels. And seeing is always subjective. There's no objective about what we see. We always see from our own world, from our own experiences, from our own thoughts, from, 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 from our own feelings. So it's always subjective what we, was so, well, what we see. So what we see can lift us up and what we see can put us down and it's all in our eyes it has nothing to do with, with anybody else it's all in our eyes the same way the Meraglim said we saw ourselves as grasshoppers so they saw us like this as well so it all depends on how we choose to look at something and what is really being seen 
are we really seeing the reality or are we seeing a distorted reality from our own world that we made ourselves think about there's a statue over here and crying poor baby we need to give it a present so he's going to stop crying imagine that <laughs> actually mitzvah tzitzit is uh, was in in the end of the parasha that we read on Shabbat because there is a connection between the tzitzit and chetam eraglim why? what is the mitzvah is saying? he's saying ולא תתורו אחרי לבבכם ואחרי עיניכם. What does it mean? תתורו means look for or tour, follow. right? Follow. Or follow. follow. They were sent לתור את הארץ. They Go didn't send, they weren't said to spy. They were sent to tour. To tour the land and see what's going on and come and let us know where is the best entrance. Yes? Just, just see. Report to us what you see. Don't interpret. Don't be CBS. Don't be Fox News. Just give us the news <laughs> with no interpretation. Just, you know, objective. But they couldn't do that. So Tzitzit saying, when you see the Tzitzit, it's going to remind you, do not, do not look on, on what your heart desire or what your eyes want to see. It's going to remind you where is the truth. It's going to remind you where your eyes or where your gaze or where your intention of seeing needs to be. In the... in Hashem. See the truth. Remember what the truth is. Don't believe everything you see. Don't believe everything your heart is telling you. Your eyes can lie because your eyes are looking through your feelings, through your emotions, through your experiences, through a lot of past that, that you experience. It's not always the truth. Be careful. Be very careful. And this is where Mitzvah Tzitzit comes at the end of the, of the parasha that we read about the Chet HaMeraglim. And it's really interesting to see that the same turnover or upside down 180 is happening in the next parashot that we're going to read on this month we're going to read the coming Shabbat we're going to read parashat Korach Korach Vadato, which again is something that turned over there was a guy that thought he deserved to be Moshe because he deserves he not only convinced himself, he convinced many other people too, right? He once wanted to be lifted up. What happened to him was 180, he was swallowed by the earth with all his followers. So here is Parashat Korach again, this 180. And then we're going to have Parashat Chukat. Parashat Chukat we have Mitzvah Paraduma, the red uh, cow which is, who can understand that at all? Nobody can understand that at all. You take para, you burn it, you mix it with water, and then the Kohen is take this water and he, and he sprinkle it on somebody that is not pure, and the somebody becomes pure, but the Kohen becomes unpure. What? Like, from here to here to here, what's going on over here? What is this opposite? How, how come it's like, uh, uh, wh where is the truth? What, what's right? What are we seeing here? W what's right here? Is he pure or unpure? He was pure and then he touched the water and he became uh, unpure. But the, the same water that made him unpure, when he sprinkled it on another person, the other person became pure. How can this be? What's going on? This opposite. And then we have Parashat Balak after that and Parashat Balak we are reading about Bil'am Shtumayin again I again we have the eye Bil'am had only one eye one eye was shut there was a reason for it but we are not going to go into it but again we have eyes we are talking about eyes and about seeing and Bil'am is trying to do what? curse and what's happening? is blessing is blessing again oh. at, and upside down and 180 
everything is turning over with all the parashot in, in this month of the Muz. And when we think about turning over Afachim, Nafochu, it reminds us of what Purim. Purim. What Purim has to do over here? How did Purim arrive now? Mm-hmm. Are we in Chodesh Tammuz or Chodesh Adar? What's mm-hmm. going on over here? How come we have so much Nafochu? It's, it's supposed to belong to Purim. The, the unpure become pure, the curses become blessing, the one that wanted to become on top is swallowed by, by the earth. What, what's going on over here? So we're learning another thing from the Kabbalah, that the, the luck or the sign that rules the month of Tammuz has to do with Esav. Remember Esav, mm-hmm. the brother of uh, Yaakov? And Esav is connected to Purim. How does Esav connect it to Purim? Aman Arasha, Imachshemo, was from uh, the seed of Amalek, Ben Elipaz, Amalek Ben Elipaz, which was the grandson of Esav. In, you see, we are connecting all the dots. So there was a big problem with the man Arashai Machshimo. He had a very big problem with his vision. What he saw has nothing to do with reality at all. Really, nothing to do with reality. He was um, conniving and, and lying and flattering and he is managing to bring himself to the level of the second to the king the king that ruled 127 states it's like think about it, it's like two and a half times America it's like it's like huge huge he was the second to the Melech Achashverosh there was no other more important man than him in those entire 127 states other than Amelech Achashverosh and even him he got his his ring he had his seal of the king he was actually he could function as if he is the king this is how important he was and what's bothering him what's his problem anybody remembers what's his problem no every time he comes through the gates of the palace Everybody is bowing to him except Mordechai the Yehudi. And Mordechai lo yichra ve lo yishtachave. No. He doesn't bow. He doesn't, doesn't. Doesn't do that. And Esther invites him to, the, to, to a feast with the king. And he's so happy. And he is thinking about the honor that he's going to get from the king and the honor he's going to get from Esther and then he gets to the gate of the uh, palace and again everybody is bowing to him except Mordechai Yehudi and this drives him nuts <laughs> because he sees nothing at that moment he sees nothing except from the fact that one man one man, one little Jew, doesn't bow. He has everything. A wife, children, statue, uh, um, um, uh, money, honor, whatever he wants, he has. And what's bothering him? Mordechai doesn't bow to him. And what does he say? What does he say? He say, every time I see this Mordechai Yehudi sitting in the entrance of the gate of the palace. Kol ze eino shaveli. All of this doesn't worth anything to me. Everything that he has worth nothing to him because Mordechai Yehudi is not bowing to him. And this Pasuk actually is the Pasuk of Chodesh Tammuz. Every month has its own Pasuk that with its letters, either the first letters of the word or the last letters of the word, 
uh, is the combination of the four letters of the name of a name in different order. And this pasuk has the letters of Hashem at the end, Ze Eino Shaveli, Hey Vav, Hey Yud, in a different order, that it belongs to Chodesh Tammuz. So another connection, how we are connecting Purim to Chodesh Tammuz. He has everything, everything a man can dream of, and still call Ze Eino Shaveli. It doesn't work anything to me nothing because all he can see is this one person that doesn't he's not looking at everything that he does have he's focusing on what he's missing not on everything that he has just on what's missing and what's missing becomes everything this little speck is everything think about it usually there's a, like Somebody can take a piece of paper and make a, a dot in the middle of the paper and going to ask, what do you see? Most people are going to say what? A dot. Does anybody notice that there's a whole paper around it? So what are we focusing on exactly? Do you see all the white or are you focusing on the little Mordechai Yehudi that doesn't bow? This one I am focusing on. So he's ignoring everything that's good and focusing only on what's missing. Only, only on the bed. Nothing is, is worth while anymore because this little thing doesn't align with his will, with his plan, with his wishes, with whatever in his mind he deserves or he's supposed to have, right? So it's a matter of seeing. It's a matter of choosing what to see. It's a matter of what are we choo choosing to focus our attention on. Mm -hmm. Are we focusing on what we have or on what we want to have? Are we focusing on the good or are we fo focusing on the bad? Because they all exist. But how we're going to feel about the reality has to do with how we're going to choose to look at it, or what we're going to choose to focus on in this reality. So let's look on ourselves for a second and be a little honest, a little, not much, a little honest. How much different are we really from those women that sit and cry with the Tammuz statue? How really are we different? Really, let's think about that. How many times do you create for yourself a very tragic uh, victim um, self-image? It happens. Every month before period. Yeah. <laughs> and then we idol. So and then we <laughs> idol ourselves, and we feel sorry for ourselves so much, and we cry. Because our fortune is so miserable and our life is so bad. And really, how different are we? Think about that. How many times do we actually do that? Only because at that moment or moments or days, we choose to see the reality different. It's the same reality. It's just we choose to look at it differently than before. That's the whole difference, right? So instead of have a um, three-dimension perspective with both eyes, we either look with the right or the left, but either way we see either the right side or the left side. We never see how it combines together, how it mesh together, and how it can be something else that it's not either good or bad, but it can be something else that we choose to see that is good for us, or the best for us, or whatever, optimal for us. So you can hear things like, my neighbor's husband is better than my husband, my neighbor's house is bigger than my house, my neighbor's car is better than my car, 
My neighbor's children are more successful than my children. Uh, my neighbor is prettier than me. Um, my, my, my life is very difficult. Her life is so easy. Uh, this is not fair. I deserve better. And we cry lead. It's like we cry tears of Tammuz. We cry tears of lead, tears that choose to see the reality very distorted, really, really very distorted. <laughs> because it's really at the bottom of everything, it's not true. At all, it's not true. It says in Masechet Yoma, Umishelcha it nulach, I will translate. אין אדם נוגע במוכן לחברו ואין מלכות נוגעת בחברתה אפילו כמלוא הנימה. What does it say? Whatever you are given is yours. You are given what is yours, what belongs to you. No man can touch anything that belongs to another man. No kingdom can touch another kingdom, even a speck. Nothing. The word is very precise. Hashem created a very precise word. Very balanced. Very, very precise word. Look at a, at a puzzle, right? All the pieces, they look the same, but you cannot put them in a different place other than their place, even though they all look the same. And if one piece is missing, the picture is not whole. There is no one piece that is more important than the other piece. And there is no one piece that is more beautiful than the other piece because they are all required to make this puzzle whole, complete and beautiful. Right? And each and every piece of the puzzle needs to be there the way it is. Otherwise, it's not going to do its job and then it's going to ruin the entire picture. So this is basically what it says. What's yours is yours, and what's hers is hers. And, and there's no way that you deserve what she has, or she deserves what you have. It just, it wasn't, the world was not created that way. And if we are sinning <laughs> by seeing that in that way, so we are choosing to see wrong. It's our choice to see wrong. So whatever Hashem prepared for you is very precise and special and intended for you. Not for anybody else, just for you. And it's only depending on you how you choose to see what you got. What you choose to see what you um, received. Uh, Rabbi Nachman Mibreslev writes something very beautiful. I'll try to uh, uh, um, translate it. It's not easy to translate the, this language. So my apologies in advance. He says like this, Da, ki tzarich ladun et kol adam lechaf zchut. No, that there is a need to judge everyone for the good. How do you say it? Favorably. 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 And, and even somebody that is a complete evil. You need to search and look and find even a little bit good in him. Because in that, because in that little, he is not evil, in that little, good. And by that, that you find a little good in that person, and judging him favorably, by that, you are lifting this person up and really put him in a favorable place. And you will be able to bring him back and make the tshuva for this person. And I'm telling you, this is what Rabbi Nachman said. And I'm telling you that you need to know, that you need to start with yourself. Not with other people. Start with yourself. Know that you need to judge yourself favorably. 
and you need to find it yourself a little good even if you think that you are complete evil and there's nothing good about you you have to find a little good because everybody has a little good in it and when you find this little good enlarge it make it bigger because by that you can last tshuva but not tshuva just to go back to Hashem tshuva to get back to yourself back, go back to yourself to your authentic self to the place in you that is pure and good and nothing can taint it and with life sometimes we lose it because so many things are happening to us and we might think about oh I'm not good enough I'm not good things are happening to me bad things are happening to me maybe I deserve that and no you have to look and find this little good in yourself and understand that's not the truth this is your distorted vision on, on yourself so don't look on other people yeah look on other people but first start with yourself first start and find in yourself something good because you are the most important thing because from you everything comes you are the one that sees the world you are the one that interprets the world you are the one that perceive everything you are the one that interact with other people so if you find the good in yourself and you can enlarge this good in yourself then you can spread it around <laughs> you have so and, and you have because Hashem made you unique like this piece of puzzle with a very um, specific mission in life which is yours and w- and he gave you everything that you need for that to do this mission that you need to do and everything that he gave you is good there's no way he gave you something that is not good everything he gave you is good you need just to find it so Rav Volbe Shlomo Volbe has a beautiful book that called Alei Shur and he writes very beautifully he says each and every one is a unique creation and every man has to know that what? that you are a unique creation you have to know that he says I with my strength and my um, characteristics my face this gulot nafshi and um, uh, how to translate that treasures I, I don't know w- whatever is special about my soul okay yechidi ba'olam is unique in the world single in the world ben kol ha'chayim achshav en af echad kamoni between everybody that lives now there's no one like me badorot sh'avru lehaya kamoni in back generation, past generation, there was nobody like me. And until the end of all generation, there's not going to be anybody like me. And if so, And if it's this way, for sure, Hashem sent me to this world with a special mission otherwise why am I so special why am I so unique nobody else can fulfill this mission only me with my um, one of a kind one of a kind one of a kindness one of the kindness yes <laughs> So if you can see yourself like this, look at yourself like this with these eyes of Rabbi Nachman Breslev, of Rabbi Rab, Rab Volbe, and so many other. I just brought a few, a few, right? If you can see yourself like this, you're gonna save yourself so much suffering and sorrow and sadness, really only by changing the way you look at yourself and if you can see the people that are around you the way Hashem see them 
you will be able to bring to your life so much happiness because it's only a choice of what you see it's only a choice of what we see so when you think about the last bracha that we say after we eat not mezonot or bread the other one this bracha when I first read it I started to cry not like before like cry like <laughs> like I couldn't stop crying when I read the words and understood what I was reading I couldn't believe my eyes and I couldn't believe my ears what my mouth is saying I couldn't believe that that there is such bracha exist seriously do you know which bracha I'm talking about? Bore Nefashot It goes like this Baruch Atah Melech HaOlam Bore Nefashot Rabot Vechesronan The one that created many uh, souls and what they are lacking of This for me was like mind blowing Really? I was created missing things like I'm not complete, I'm not, not perfect. perfect, I'm not supposed to be perfect. I'm not. I was created with deficiencies. I was created with failing. I was created not perfect. I don't need to be perfect anymore. You know, such a relief. I don't need to be perfect. This is so amazing. <laughs> I was, I was, I was. I was created that way. It's fine. This is how Hashem wanted to create each and every one of us. You're not supposed to be perfect. Wow. You know, it's like 10 kilos off. It was such a relief. And then it continues and said, Al kol ma shebarat ala achayot bahem nefesh kol chai On everything that you created to revive our souls Baruch Hayalamim We are thanking you Hashem for creating in your world things that I can use to fulfill and feel whatever is missing in, in me Can you believe that? I'm telling you, I don't know For me it was mind blowing like a realization that I couldn't believe what I'm reading. I don't know, maybe you were born like this and grew up like this. I wasn't. I didn't know Hashem when I was a child. I didn't know Hashem was when I was growing up. And when I started to get to know Hashem and read and bless and pray and the words, do you understand the words, what it means? Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's like, ah, oh, I remember, I remember, I remember the moment. I remember where I was standing in my home. I remember which sidur I have in my, I had in my hands. I gave it away, this sidur. But I remember the sidur. I remember looking at it. And I remember where I was standing. And I remember I was crying. And I remember being alone and I had nobody to share it with. Nobody. <laughs> Okay. Hashem is filling in for our spouses that he, he, was, he created us sufficient in order to have our spouses complete. to fulfill us. Yes. Complete us. Because we are, we are, right. we were, we were cut. Right. Right. We were cut. This is a whole different shoe. Right. <laughs> so, when you look at yourself, you need to understand you're not defected. Mm -hmm. You're perfect as you are with the deficiencies, with what's missing. This is, for me, is amazing, I think. And he also gave us whatever we need in this world to feel it. Whether it's physical food or spiritual food, which is the Torah, what we are doing now. We're doing both. We're doing spiritual food and physical food. <laughs> We're doing whatever we need. But you need to start with a lot, a lot of self-love. 
This is where it needs to start. Don't be Tammuz. Don't sit and cry for yourself. Lead tears. Lie tears. This is not the right way to see the things. Love yourself. You are unique. You are special. You are... Um, how do you say? Chad Pamit? No. Who is Chad Pamit? Chad Pamit? What did you say? I said a This is Chad oh, one, one, one of a kind. One of a kind. Because the, when, when um, Rabbi Akiva said about the entire Torah on one foot, what was the word he said? What does it mean? In order to love somebody else, first you need to love you. You should love your fellow man like you. So it starts with you. If you cannot love yourself, how can you love somebody else? And impossible. So it has to start with you. Yeah, love yourself. See yourself in a good eye. Love yourself because you're worth it. And you know how we know that? Because Hashem put you here. That's right. He created you. So you're worth it. By mere existence, you're worth it. Just see that. So I will bless you for a good month, very good amen, month. Amen. The acronyms of Tammuz in scrambled a little bit is Zmanet Teshuvah Memashmeshim Uveim. How do you translate it? The times of Teshuvah are nearing and coming. Because we have Tammuz, and then we have Av, the Nechama of Av, and then we are starting Elul. Elul. Elul, Matchilim Teshuvah. May Hashem bless each and every one of you. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.